Bandits, ask you Malaysia and uh, hyperparathyroidism, metabolic bone disorder, which is more medicine related. Okay. So, what is rickets? Vitamin D deficiency. What happens in this? The matrix of the bone forms very well, but mineralization into that matrix doesn't occur properly. Calcium doesn't uh, get into those osteoid seams of the matrix. That's a problem. In the children who are growing, what we see is rickets, and the adults who are already grown. When there is vitamin D deficiency, what we see is osteomalacia. So, what is this deformity called as doctor? As such, a wind has swept his both legs. Wind swept deformity, it is called as in case of rickets. So, rickets may mineralization failure is there. Typically, you see it in the growth plates the absence of mineralization because of that there is a softening of the bone and that is the reason due to the softening there is a deformity which is basically developing so this is the growth plate this is the direction of the bone growth and uh, you have got uh, resting cartilage multiplying cartilage maturing cartilage calcified cartilage and mature bone this is how the histological structure of the cartilage is basically now this is a typical radiograph which is showing the abnormality of the epiphyseal metaphyseal area in case of the rickets. There are two types of rickets, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is because of the vitamin D deficiency and vitamin D metabolism deficiency is the underlying cause. Type 2 rickets because of uh, phosphate deficiency type 2 rickets and uh, what is the problem in the type 2 rickets tubules are there no they have ability to reabsorb phosphate reabsorb calcium the tubular reabsorption of the phosphates is impaired in these people so phosphate urea is there so decreased phosphate will be there and that will be responsible for the Type 2 is what need to be remembered. Similarly, any diminished phosphate intake also can lead to development of hypophosphatemia. Especially, suppose you put a patient on total parental nutrition for a long period of time, intensive care unit, but total parental nutrition you are administering. Such people will develop different electrolyte deficiencies. Hypophosphatemia can be a risk in them. But what is the commonest cause of rickets any day? Nutrition. Nutritional deficiency is the most common cause. So, typical child of rickets is one year old child. Any older child develops vitamin D deficiency and rickets means generally underlying cause is malabsorption. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. Any steatoria any gastrointestinal abnormality leading to fat malabsorption will also affect the fat soluble vitamins. Hence, steatoria patients can develop vitamin D deficiency. Now, the first clinical manifestation, craniotapes, is uh, the early manifestations in the case of the rickets, rickety infants. What do you, what is the meaning of it? The membranous bones of the calvarium they become so soft and whenever you press you get a ping pong ball ko press karne wala feeling aata hai and that is called as the craniotapes once the child reaches at least an age of 6 months then the frontal bone and parietal bone bossing is the next important uh, clinical feature of the rickets the long bones, ends of the long bones, they become broadened. And where do you look for the broadening of the end of the epiphyseal end of the long bones? Knee joint and wrist joint are the two classical locations. 
when will you see this finding between 6 to 9 months of age so what age what you see is important at the age 1 you see craniotips at 6 months after 6 months frontal bossing and 6 to 9 months you will see this broadening of the long bone ends and eruption of the teeth become typically delayed Harrison sulcus this is called as you can see a horizontal depression along the lower part of the chest the point where the diaphragm inserts is basically called Harrison sulcus Pygen's chest is the next important deformity where the sternum is very very prominent is what you will come across the costochondral junctions that is uh, where the sternum is there ribs are attaching costochondral junction is there so that is the uh, place where um, they become very prominent so that lead to development of a rachitic rosary is what you will come across so it's a typical lateral radiograph of the chest which is showing widened costochondral junctions you are able to see and that is the typical feature of rachitic rosary is what you need to remember there is a development of a muscular hypotonia when the muscle of the abdomen become very weak what happens protruding abdomen will occur that is called pot belly viscerotosis lumbar lordosis even obesity will lead to all these things right so all those things will basically develop then the ambulating child once the child is walking and all his weight is falling on his knees then you develop they develop bony bow legs knock knees both knees will come closer to each other and legs become bowed is what you typically come across then let us look at radiological features PG medical entrance may rickets radiological features favorite issue for examiner ok <coughs> you should be very sure where will you look for the changes lower end of the radius radi lower end of the ulna are the classical locations where you will look for call lot of times asked where will you look for both wrists and knees you have to order for a AP view of the chest x-ray in all suspected cases so what do you expect on radiology epiphysis are then a growing gain falsification centers and all there is a delayed appearance at every age you expect a particular ossification center forensic may that is a big hangama what age which ossification center uh, then another dirty topic is dentition which tooth erupt when since we don't want to be dentist we became doctors no so but forensic may that will be haunting question huh? so delayed appearance of epiphysis epiphysial plates become widened now let us see this is a 17 month old male wrist is showing irregular shadow and widening of the epiphysial plate this is the epiphysial plates how are they looking like cups chai pine wale cups ke jaise hai na so this is called cupping of the are able to appreciate two cups are there epiphysial cupping is what you are able to see here so what is the normal width of an epiphysial plate normally around 2 to 3 millimeters in rickets this become increased because we have seen no different types of cartilages usme uncalcified osteoid once it accumulates that lead to widening of this epiphysial plate in rickets that is the reason you come across widening of the epiphysial plate and the cupping is what you are able to see then cupping of the metaphysis is another important feature and uh, <coughs> normally whenever the epiphysis and metaphysis meet each other there is a smooth line of uh, sclerosis which is present then as in the case of the rickets where epiphysis and metaphysis are meeting that line is absent between epiphyso metaphysial junction and the metaphysis become metaphysial end become irregular that is a very important feature and uh, cup shaped epiphysis and metaphysis that is very important to remember 
Now let us see. In this bone, this is the point where generally metapisis and epipisis are expected to show a sclerotic line between them. That is not there. And the metaphysis is showing a cupped appearance, which is uh, and widening of the metaphysis is there. So that is the important feature, right? Then uh, splaying of the metaphysis is another important feature. Then shaft, how will it be? If there is no mineralization, the shaft will show rarefaction. Basically, shaft can be what very thick white uh, shaft. You may find are very lucent shaft, which is not that white when you take an X-ray. So you find rarefaction of that uh, shaft is a very important feature. Knock knees, bow legs, coxvara, etc. They are all the other important deformities. Now comes a very important question. Rickets me kya hota hai, doctor? Rickets me hota hai. Uh, can you give me, uh, project me this? Yeah. <clears throat> One sec, doctor. So, what happens in the case of the Rickets. This you should understand clearly. Vitamin D deficiency is there, doctor. Vitamin D deficiency is there. When the vitamin D is low, then what happens? Absorption of the calcium become impaired from the gut. So when there is a decreased calcium, right? What will happen? that will go and stimulate your parathyroids and make the parathormone become produced and what is the effect of the parathormone on the renal tubule in the proximal tubule proximal tubule uh, when the glomerular filtrate is passing reabsorption of the calcium and loss of phosphate into urine. Phosphate is lost into urine. That is the effect of parath hormone. And this parath hormone is stimulated because of low calcium. And that will come to the renal tubule and lead to development of phosphaturia. So that the serum phosphate levels also typically become low. So what is the combination? Serum phosphate becoming low, serum calcium becoming low. Sometimes serum calcium can be normal. Why? This parath hormone which got stimulated, it will go to the bones. It will go to the bone. It will lead to the dissolution of this bone and release the calcium. So that the low calcium where is it? Ah, low calcium become because of this calcium which got uh, released can become normal. So calcium kaise ho sakta? Calcium can be low or normal. That is what you have to basically understand. Okay, doctor. That is another mechanism. That is another mechanism. But calcium intake itself is low, no. So it has to bring the calcium from the bank. If you are a beggar, if you save money, what will you save? That begging money only, you will save a little more. You have to rob a bank. That who is that bank? You have to rob a bank. Who is the bank? Bone. That is what should happen. Right? So, tell me the summary, doctor. Very important. Serum calcium is usually low or even normal. Being normal doesn't rule out the rickets. That's the point I want to emphasize. Serum phosphate is low. Then, what happens to when parathormone become high? Oh, bone ke upar kaam kar rahe. 
whenever the metabolic activity on the bone increases, alkaline phosphatase levels will become increased. That's the point you need to understand. This is the story called rickets. Then what happens? Suppose if somebody has got um, hyperparathyroidism. Let's talk about it. Hyperparathyroidism. <coughs> Hyperparathyroidism, you have parathyroid glands, can be of two varieties. Pela hota hai primary hyperparathyroidism, other is secondary hyperparathyroidism. Secondary hyperparathyroidism will occur in case of the rickets and other situations. Okay, renal failure, rickets and all. So, if it is a primary hyperparathyroidism, that lead to, that is due to parathyroid adenoma that releases the parathormon and that lead to increased calcium reabsorption. So, calcium serum levels will become elevated. That will cause phosphaturia. So, phosphate levels in the serum become diminished. Primary hyperparathyroidism. That is a typical picture. Urinary phosphate will become Urinary phosphate will become increased. Primary hyperparathyroidism. Agar secondary hyto, what is the initiating event in secondary? Low calcium. That low calcium will become normal calcium but not elevated calcium. If elevated calcium is there, that is not secondary hyperparathyroidism. Right? Then, Generally, what is the underlying cause leading to the development of secondary hyperparathyroidism? Lack of vitamin D. What is the cause of the lack of vitamin D? Kidney failure. Kidney failure. Kidney me kya hota hai? One alpha hydroxylase will be there. Right. So, kidney failure, one alpha hydroxylase is not there. 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol cannot be produced. And because of that, there is no active vitamin D. That is the underlying cause. But the underlying pathology is in the kidney. If the kidney is not working, normally kidney is supposed to excrete phosphate into the urine. It can't excrete. Renal failure is a state of hyperphosphatemia, basically. That is the reason phosphate levels will be how? Will be increased. That is another differentiating factor. Primary hyperparathyroidism may what happen? Kidneys are working well. All this excess parathormone made phosphaturia. So phosphate levels are low. But if it is a secondary hyperparathyroidism, what will happen? Phosphate levels will be high. This you don't forget. Okay? How to differentiate primary from secondary hyperparathyroidism? Then there is one more entity called osteoporosis. Isme mineralization ka kuch bhi dikkat nahi hai. What is the problem in osteoporosis? Matrix of the bone is not forming. Matrix of the bone. There is a reason how will be calcium in this? Normal. Phosphate in this? Normal. Alkaline phosphatase in this? Normal. When everything is normal, that is osteoporosis. So, be very sure. So, next time when they ask an entrance exam, this evening should be a meaningful evening for you to remember. And suppose if phosphate levels was given as high and you happen to answer the, you, are, you happen to deliver an answer that uh, it is primary hyperparathyroidism, my evening is wasted. Right? If it is phosphate high, hai to, Primary hota ya secondary hota? Huh? Secondary hyperparathyroidism. Phosphate low hai to? Primary hyperparathyroidism. That is what you need to basically remember. Jyoti says primary parathyroidism once more. You will get back in the video. Huh? So, uh, you need to review in the video. Anyway, in endocrinology, yehi story hota hai. Huh? That's the point. Okay. Huh.
तो मेरर भी रिकेट्स इज वी आर नॉट ए डन नो ओके राइट राइट डॉक्टर आफ्टर वन आर्थोपेडिक्स इज ओवर If you can come on weekdays, I can review ophthalmology on weekdays. Complimentary, free. But if you all want to come, I, because ophthalmology, ENT, SPM, ortho, ped, medicine, surgery, gynops. Surgery, you are all there. No, then weekend classes, cool. Shilpa will come and teach gynops. No issue. Medicine will be planned Saturdays and days. right evening 4 to 8 uh just i am telling you suppose if you want to come all of you want to come then ophthalmology i'll review for you because ophthalmology also is a deciding factor glaucoma trachoma so many comas are there we don't know drugs in glaucoma kya hai ye hai wo cataract mein intra capsular extra capsular differences between intra and extra logically oriented subject hai ophthal also राइट बट टेन आउट ऑफ टेन स्कोर करने वाला सब्जेक्ट है टेन मार्क्स आउट ऑफ टेन मार्क्स यू कैन स्कोर कंफर्टेबली इन ऑफ सो एनीवे राइट सो हाउ डू ट्रीट डॉक्टर बेसिकली रिकेट्स विटामिन डी यू विल एडमिनिस्टर सिक्स लैख यूनिट एज अ सिंगल ओवरल डोज द मोमेंट यू डिस्कवर रिकेट्स इट विल गिव रैपिड हीलिंग देन यू आर What, if there is a healing, what will you expect? When you take a repeat X-ray, every pieces, many pieces, ke beech mein line of sclerosis is there. No, agar wo aaya ya nahi aaya, line ke liye dekhna padta. There are so many lines in life. Pregnancy test is also one line, right? When you get heart attack, troponin T test mein, bedside test mein, there is one line. This is also another line, line of healing. If it doesn't come within three weeks of therapy, then you need to repeat one more dose. Then how much maintenance dose you'll give? You'll give 400 international units of vitamin D as the maintenance dose. Suppose second dose also, if there is no response, then what do you call it as? Refractory rickets is what you will basically make a conclusion. Then what is the orthopedic aspect of rickets? there are some specialized splints called mermaid splints mermaid is that fish mermaid ha eh? mermaid splints specially designed so many there are orthopedic shoes which will correct the foot deformities i mean knee deformities if one leg is long other leg is short shaadi hona mushkil ho jata to special shoe pehen ke jana padta ha then what are the operative methods that you can do very simple you need to do corrective osteotomies in order to limb one limb long one limb short hai to you need to do corrective osteotomies so that both the limbs will come to same level that's what you need to do that is the story called rickets then osteomalacia that also is the same common in women who don't have nowadays women men everybody don't have exposure to sunlight 80% of the Doctors in Hyderabad are having vitamin D deficiency. आप कार्डियोलॉजी बोपी में बैठते बाद में इंटरवेंशनल एंजियोग्राम करने के लिए जाते आप से दिख सही तो अल्ट्रासाउंड सिजेरियन अल्ट्रासाउंड सिजेरियन सो अल्ट्रासाउंड इज एयर कंडीशन क्लोज्ड रूम सिजेरियन में उसको क्लोज्ड रूम वेर इज़ द सन राइट अल्टीमेटली वन डे आह हियर पे� then you will find vitamin d is 6 5 very low levels then you start eating vitamin d tablets right very common huh? so then uh, under nutrition during pregnancy similarly if you do partial gastrectomy also malabsorption can lead to fat malabsorption can lead to vitamin d deficiency how will they present any any person doctor diffuse body aches if they are there evaluate them for vitamin d take it as my point in your uh, family neighborhood everybody will be saying oh lot of body pains i don't know what to do 
I am a computer software engineer. Then uh, you need to get uh, uh, vitamin D evaluated. So bone pains, muscular weakness. And uh, at one point of time the weakness uh, can lead to calcium levels can become so low that carpopedal spasms can occur. And uh, spontaneous fractures, kyphosis, all these things can develop uh, in the people. So how will you investigate? <coughs> so uh, there is a diffuse rarefaction of the bones, almost like a glass the bone will be looking like. No white, white thing in the femur bone, humerus bone, they all look like a glass. Loser's zones, they are called pseudo fractures, is another important hallmark. Wherever the stress is there in our bones, typically you can see. This is the femur, neck of the femur. Here you are able to see one loose NC is here, doctor. Since I pointed, you are able to recognize, but uh, the here, 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 a lot of lucencies are there, but this lucency is there, no? That band like small fracture is, I mean, uh, lucency is loser's stone. Favorite MCQ in entrance, where do you find loser's stone? You will find it in osteomalacia. What are the common signs? The pubic remi, axillary border of the scapula, the ribs, and the neck of the femur's medial cortex, as what you can see here, they are all the classical locations. What is the cause of a loser zone? Rapid resorption, rapid resorption and lack of mineralization. Jabbi hypercalcemia is there, parathormone is causing resorption from the bone. Rapid resorption, lack of mineralization. Typically will lead to um, loser's zone. Then in females it can lead to development of a triradiate pelvis where you can see pubic symphysis are both separated from each other. Are you able to see? Separated pubic symphysis along with the uh, angle of the head and uh, the um, shaft got altered. Coxabara deformity. So, this is a typical triradiate pelvis. Another favorite MCQ, lot of times asked, where do you see triradiate pelvis? Where will you see? Osteomalacia. Protrusio acetabuli, where the acetabulum is protruding into the pelvis, into the pelvis, that is what you will see with osteomalacia. This is another example where you can see loser's zone in the points of the stress. Uh, healing loser's zone is what you are able to see in case of rickets. Iliac crespo, if you do bone biopsy, then you can show uncalcified osteoid to demonstrate and prove. But generally you don't need such a big proof. Right. Now, how is the serum calcium? Low. Phosphates are also low, just like rickets. Alkaline phosphatase is high. That is what you come across. So, how will you treat vitamin D? Daily maintenance dose 400 international units. If there is a renal disease as the underlying cause, then you need to do active form of the vitamin D. 125 vitamin D is what you need to do directly. Right? Then calcium supplementation should also be given. That is all the story. Then last but not the least in this list will be hyperparathyroidism. So basically, uh, bones, bones, stones, psychic moans. Huh? Huh. So the combination is hyperparathyroidism. What will hyperparathyroid will do? It will make osteoclast to resolve the bone and release the calcium and phosphate. That is what it will basically do. What is the secondary messenger for parathyroid Idomelate cyclase. We will discuss more in detail in uh, uh, endocrinology. So, I will quickly run to show you. Uh, okay, There are a few things in uh, orthopedics which we can't escape. I'll, uh, so, let us not escape. 
Okay, let's not go too much into biochemistry because that's anyway we need to do in endo. Hyperparathyroidism is a disorder you see in the third to fifth decade. Bone pain is the most common initial feature. Then uh, pathological factors can develop because of the resorption of the bone. And that can occur in the dorsal lumbar spine, neck of the femur and cubic remi. Any areas there can be a fractures pathologically happening due to the bone resorption in hyperparathyroidism. Now, brown tumor, whenever parathyroid is there, it will stimulate osteoclast which will resolve the bone. Because of that, there is a development of a lucent lytic area in the bone which is called brown tumor. So, where do you see brown tumor? Hyperparathyroidism. Loser's zone? Osteomalacia. So, be sure. Eh? And commonly, maxillae, mandible, any bone can be affected with a brown tumor when hyperparathyroidism is there. Now, what will you evaluate? You will take a dorsal lumbar spine x ray, lateral view of the skull, both the hands, pelvis. Or any area wherever the symptoms are there, you will basically take the radiograph. So, what are the radiological signs? There is a rarefaction of the diffuse rarefaction of all the bones. Then, in the skull, what is called salt pepper appearance of the skull is the classical feature. The skull bones will show a lot of stippling. And uh, small pinhead sized opacities multiply present in the actually in this view you can't appreciate. You need to put it on the console and uh, you will appreciate it better there. Huh? Now, in the teeth, loss of lamina dura is another important feature of the hyperparathyroidism. Now, these are the teeth where there are there is a loss of lamina dura. What is lamina dura? Basically, there is a thin cortical bone in which our tooth socket is created. So, there is a, a white line surrounding the teeth. So, that is called lamina dura. That uh, white line which is supposed to surround the uh, tooth in the tooth socket in the bones, jaw bones, that will be resolved. Loss of lamina dura. Then subperiosteal resorption of the phalanges is another important diagnostic feature. Classical diagnostic feature, which you see in case of the hyperparathyroidism. Then spine can show central collapse of the vertebral body. And how will be how will be the intervertebral disc? What happens with the intervertebral disc? They become biconvex intervertebral discs. That's what will basically happen. Okay, doc. So these are the important changes. So how are the serum findings in hyperparathyroidism? Calcium become high, phosphate become low, alkaline phosphate become high. But if it is secondary hyperparathyroidism, calcium become low to normal. Mostly it will normalize, not high. Phosphate will be high because underlying cause is renal failure. Alkaline phosphatase is high. And uh, however, the urinary excretion of calcium in hyperparathyroidism parathormone will cause more reabsorption of calcium. So, calcium in urine is low. Phosphate is high. That is what you need to basically understand, doctor. Hmm?